Hey guys, Matt here. So I kind of want to react a little bit to this. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if you can call this news, but, but sort of an opinion piece, uh, some analyst estimates that Zax has and reported by a website called MarketBeat. So I'm not going to read this whole thing. You can pause and read this if you want to, but I am going to react react to bits of this. So Zax, as you can re as you can see here, made some pretty I guess negative comments about Chivo. And I'm not going to react in this the way that if you're new to my channel, you expect a YouTuber who has Jibo shares to react. But let's talk about it. So the first thing I want to point out is that Zach's Investments it reports that Jibo will report in 580,000 in sales for the court and court quarter. And that is down from 990,000 in the same quarter last year. And that would suggest a negative year over year growth rate of 41.4%. Now that I'm not going to argue with because Jibo has not done well these past several quarters as far as revenue. So this right here is not the thing I'm going to, this I'm not going to hold against Zach. So that's perfectly, uh, that's probably going to happen. So this right here is going to happen. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if this is even lower. Like Jibo has had a history of missing earnings estimates. So this is probably going to happen. According to Zach's, Analysts expect that Jibo will report full year sales of 1.43 million for the current fiscal year, which is a far cry from 5.3 million reported the year prior. And to be perfectly honest, I think that's going to happen. And like I said with their uh, quarter report, I wouldn't be surprised if Jibo misses this. I wouldn't be surprised if Jibo beats this. Jibo has had a history of missing these things. And to be perfectly honest, um, from Jibo's point of view, since both their uh, facilities, the ones that had actually been making the money, have been shut down last year due to COVID and other reasons, yeah, that was those factories were were Jibo's prime money maker. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Jibo misses this by quite a bit. So yeah, I'll give Zach that 100%. Now in the same report, Zach also says that analysts expect for the next finance financial year for 2022. The company will report sales of 2.69 million and that is a sign of the company starting to come back and we're, we're going to talk about that in a second and then they're going to talk about jivo missing quarterly earnings which should be a surprise to no one if you've been in jivo for any period of time talks about jivo having a negative net margin of 2200 percent and a negative return to equity of 2.999 percent yeah all bad and then zach's also cut jivo from a hold rating to a sell and research note on Tuesday, March the 30th. Now, that note is, I believe, is paywalled, and I'm not paying Zach to get the full details on why on the research note itself on its details. But I mean, if you look at its, um, if you look at its uh, basic, its free version of the price, I mean, you can see that style scores. It gives an F for value, D for growth, C moment, C for momentum, and then all all those things combined. So here's my reaction to all this, and this is coming from a Jibo shareholder. And to, to those of you who are new to my channel, this this reaction might surprise a lot of you. Is that I think I see where Zax is coming from. I see, I see where they're coming from, and I can argue against a lot of it. I just want to know what time period they're um, they're gauging by. And what I mean by all that is, if you look at their current valuation measures. They're terrible. They're absolutely horrible. Their price of book is pretty good, and that's because their that's because their balance sheet is fantastic. But if you look at their revenue, a quarterly revenue over this past year, it is god awful. And if you look at their net income, also god awful. Now, I don't know how much of it you can attribute to them. Because, like I said earlier, uh, both their facilities, the ones that have been actually making them the money recently, have been shut down due to COVID and other reasons. So, I can respect that. Now, those facilities are opening back up. So, I don't know if they're open now or if they're in the process of opening. But they should start trickling in revenue pretty soon. But, I mean, as of right now, yeah, I can see where Zax is coming from. So, I mean, Jibo is not performing well as of right, literally right now. But what I, what I want to know, and I'm not faulting Zach's on this, but for what for but what I want to know is how far out is Zach's projecting? And if you're if you subscribe to Zach's, you let me know. But if it's a year, if it's two years, I can respect that. Um, but the thing about Jibo is, I mean, people aren't buying into Jibo for 
for value reasons. At least I hope not, because it doesn't make any sense. People are buying Jivo for growth reasons. That's why people are in the Jivo stock. They're not buying Jivo stock for this year or next year. They're buying Jivo for 2024. Let me explain. First of all, I'm going to draw your attention back to this very same article, article where they talk about Zach's giving Jivo a sell rating. If you scroll down here in the same article, now I'm not going to read all this. You can pause and read this yourself. You can read a whole other paragraph where it's talking about a, a number of hedge fund and institutional investors increasing their holdings in Jivo. Now, as far as what drives the stock, uh, the price of a stock upward, it's not retail investors. We're not going to move a, a stock, not even rich uh, retail investors like Jeremy from Financial Education. He's not going to move the stock. What moves the stock is institutional investors. And here we're talking several institutional investors increasing their position in Jivo. And these are big name ones like SquarePoint, Morgan Stanley, T. Rowe. They are building their positions. And why are hedge funds doing this? Well, in my opinion, it has to do with this slide right here. Jivo, now, if you've been investing in Jivo in the past decade, I'll be the first to admit they did not have a good decade at all. As a matter of fact, if you, I think there's a website in which that says that if you invested in Jivo, uh, if you invested in $10,000 in Jivo back in 2011 when they started out and went, went public, you'd have 52 cents now, as of right now. So, but investors aren't investing in Jivo now because of that. They're investing in Jivo for 2024. This slide right here. Right now, Jivo has over 1.6 billion in take or pay contracts in place. That means the contracts have already been signed by big name customers. We're talking big name customers like Delta, SAS, um, we're talking to city, city of Seattle. We're talking money that, ha that has been signed. And all Jibo has to do is to fulfill their end of the bar bargain and supply these companies with jet fuel or whatever, whatever fuel that they ask for. This is money that is ready right now, sitting on the table, and all Jibo has to do is hold up their end of the bargain. Now, their end of the bargain uh, does require them to build a whole new plant. Now, that plant is called a net zero plant, which is supposed to, that's which is supposed to help provide these companies with the with the fuel that Jibo needs to, to fulfill their end of the contract. And that, um, that plant is supposed to go online in 2024. And as long as Jibo does that, and there aren't any delays and stuff, that's money that is coming to them over the life of the contract. And not only that, but there is 10.6 billion in contracts which are actively being discussed. And I think uh, Jibo mentioned on the conference call is about this, the, the state of the actively being discussed, whether they're still being, whether they're still being sought after and negotiated. This is practically on the table. They just need to iron out specific terms. So we're talking 4.2 billion that is probably going to happen in 2024. That is why investors are, are in the Jibo right now. So yeah, I can fully respect Zach's opinion on Jivo, but I don't think they're projecting all the way out to 2024, which is which is where retail investors and I think some institutional inter institutional investors are projecting. And even before 2024, there's still something a little something to look forward to. In 2022, uh, Jivo is expected to start up and put into production their renewable natural gas facility, and that's something that they're going to sell into production for money. And also, and also used to fuel their net zero plant that they're going to use to um, honor their contract, honor their contracts in 2024. So Jibo has a lot of good things coming, uh, starting well, starting right now. Once their Laverna facilities and stuff go back online, and is, they can start making the money that that they were making before. Also in 2022, when the RNG facility goes online, and in 2024 when they start honoring all their contracts and their big money starts coming into play. Now, I'm not going to give my full opinion on Jibo. You can watch that in a playlist, playlist that I'm going to link up here. But I keep, in each of these videos, I keep alluding to a fact that, I mean, as long as Jibo honors their contracts, everything's going to be fine. The money's going to start rolling in. But that's also the risk with the company is that Jibo has to honor their contracts. Now I am. They haven't indicated. They haven't give, They haven't given me any indication that any delays are coming. So far, they've been performing very, very well. But that is the worst we have to consider. If Gino, is, if Jibo reports delays on their net zero plant, or if Jibo reports significant delays on their net zero plant, and they start not being able to honor their contracts, 
and companies start pulling out of those contracts, well, that's gonna that's gonna hurt Jivo uh, like substantially, and that's gonna make companies in the future less likely to work with Jivo. So that is a very very big thing. Is that Jivo has to hold up their end of the bargain. They have to build that plant on time. That is the risk. So is this is money on the table, and I'm and obviously I'm on board with it. But if you're investing in Jivo, you need to be aware of those risks, big or small as they may be. Now, as far as my plans with Jivo right now, I have no plans of selling whatsoever. I'm not listening to Zach's one bit. I am holding for 2024. I have no plans of selling at all. As a matter of fact, like I've been wanting to add to my position. The plan was to buy, to go in at 600, or my plan was to go in at $6 and to add to my position if it drops to $5 or $4 and keep adding. However, I mean, the stock went right on up after I bought it. So I don't know what I want to do. Now, I don't want to get greedy because I don't know if this is ever going to drop back to the $6 in the short term or not. I don't know. I know they have earnings in August, but I don't know if, if they're going to drop or raise up. And I don't want to let my greed in saying that, you know, I don't want to buy shares unless it drops to $6. I don't want to get, I don't want to let my greed to get in the way some gains, but I also have to exercise a certain sort of, certain form of discipline so i've been debating adding more shares but i don't know if i want to do that i need to think about that but anyways take care have a great day and eat your vegetables